Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is Physics Chapter Five: Uniform Circular Motion and Universal Gravitation, Video One. Today's topic is velocity, acceleration, and net force of uniform circular motion. The objectives are to know the definition for uniform circular motion, to understand the course of an object's circular path, to understand the centrifugal force is a fictitious force, to be able to. Select sketch vectors to represent centripetal force, acceleration, and velocity for objects undergoing circular motion, and to be able to identify forces that cause circular motion in different situations. Definition of uniform circular motion. This is an animation for object in uniform circular motion. From this animation, you can infer that uniform circular motion is the motion of an object in a circle with. Uniform speed, velocity is changing because the direction of the motion is changing. Let's see velocity. Velocity has two parts: magnitude and direction. That is because velocity is a vector quantity. So in uniform circular motion, velocity is two pi r over t. That is because two pi r is the circumference. That is the distance the object travels in one circle. And t, we have a special name for it. It's called a period. It's a time for one lap. So special equation is two pi r over t. The direction of circular motion is always tangent to the circle. Let's take a look at this example. A student on an amusement park park ride moves in a circular path with a radius of three point five meters once every eight point nine seconds. What is the student's average speed? Was the student average speed equals to two pi r over t? We know r, we know t. So substitute the numbers into the equation. You should get two point four seven meters per second. Now let's talk about acceleration of uniform circular motion. An object moving a uniform circular motion is changing its velocity. Since velocity is changing, there has to be acceleration because acceleration is defined as velocity change over time. Acceleration is directed toward the center of the circle. This is because only the direction of velocity is changing; the speed is not changing. Centripetal force. So, according to Newton's second law of motion, object which experiences an acceleration must require net force. The direction of that force must be in the same direction as acceleration. Since acceleration is directed toward the center, the net force must be toward the center, and this net force is referred to as centripetal force. Centripetal means center-seeking. So, in uniform circular motion, the centripetal force is a net force. It is not a separate force, such as a friction force or a tension or gravity. Or something else, or normal force. So centripetal force is everything add together is the net force. Centrifugal force is fictitious force. So here is a car driving. There is a cassette tape in the car's dash right over here. So from the passenger point of view, while the car turns, look that look like the tape. There is a force pushing the tape outward, and some people call that. A centrifugal force is acting on the tape to pushing the tape outward, but from bird's eye point of view, we can see clearly the tape is moving in a straight line. An object in motion stays in motion. What happens? The car turns because there is a force making the car turn, but there is not a force to make the tape turn. That's why the tape is going in a straight line. An object in motion stays in motion. But from the passenger's view, the tape looks like it's being pushed outward by a centrifugal force. People say, but as you, you are all physics type. Now you know there is no such thing as a centrifugal force. The tape is moving outward due to inertia. An object in motion stays in motion. There is no force acting on the tape to make it move away. Or to make it turn, especially so inertia makes an object seems to be moving away, to the in passenger's view. But we know it's going in a straight line. Let's take a look why object turn. So diagram shows a car 
Making a right-hand turn, the driver of the car is represented by the circled X. The passenger is represented by the solid circle, the blue circle. The seats are very smooth, so the path of the driver is shown. The driver continues in a straight line from the start of the turn until point A due to inertia. Now, object in motion stays in motion until over here. When it touches the side of the door, the door actually exerting a force toward the center to make the driver turn. Similarly, passenger will travel in motion in a straight line until the passenger touches the driver. When the driver touches the passenger, the driver will push the passenger inward, make the passenger turn. So once at point A, the door pushes the driver inward toward the center of the circle. With an inward force, the driver can make a circular turn. Similarly, the passenger from the start of the turn continues in a straight line to point B, where he touches the driver, where he touches his in contact with the driver. The driver will apply inward force to make the passenger turn. So an object turns because there's a force is pushing or pulling it toward the center. Only with a centripetal force, the object can turn, the driver can turn, and the passenger can turn. External force toward the center is the reason object moves in a circle. Take a look, this is amusement park ride, so you can go loop the loop, right? How does the car turn? So there are two forces, normal force and gravity. When the two forces combine, these two forces will provide a centripetal force pointing toward the center. Centripetal force is provided by normal force and the gravity to, to combine. Remember, centripetal force is a net force. So in this case, centripetal force, when you whirl a bucket around, centripetal force is provided by the tension force. Tension force is not always centripetal force, but in this case, tension force provided the force to make the bucket turn. And as the moon goes around Earth, what makes the moon goes around Earth? The moon goes around Earth due to gravity. Gravity is providing this centripetal force to make the moon goes around. Now, when a car goes around a curve, what makes a car turn? This car is uh, the centripetal force is provided by static friction. Why is it static? You probably say, wait a second, isn't a car moving? Yes, a car is moving along the curve, not toward the center. The car is not moving toward the center. So that's why the force is static. Let's take a look at this example. An object is moving a clockwise direction, clockwise from A to B to C at a constant speed. Which vector represents direction velocity vector while object is located at B? So we know velocity is tangent to the circle. It's clockwise, so the answer is D. That's the only one that's tangent to the circle. Which vector represents direction of acceleration when object is at point C? Acceleration is called a centripetal force. Acceleration is toward the center. So in this case, it's B. B is the one pointing toward the center. Which vector below represents direction force vector when the object is located at A? At A, we call that centripetal force. So with what direction pointing toward the center? The answer is D. D is the one that's pointing toward the center. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.